Hello friends, welcome back to Stable Automation. S7200 Smart PLC can be used as Modbus TCP server, client or as Modbus master or slave from RS485 port. In this video, I will configure ST20 PLC as Modbus master and communicate with the Modbus supported PID controller. I will also demonstrate how to read and write Modbus register of the slave device. S7200 Smart CPU supports two Modbus RTU master at a time, one with the onboard RS485 port and another with communication board CM01. That means you can communicate over two different slave networks or daisy chain at a time. Here I will configure the PLC as Modbus master from the onboard RS485 port. 9 pin D type male connector will be required to connect with the female port on the CPU. Pin number 3 and 8 will be used for communication and pin number 1 will be used for shielding. Now in communication part, this first block will be required to set the communication parameters. In MB underscore CTRL block, mode will be 1 or true for Modbus mode. Board rate and parity will be as per the slave device configuration. If you are using onboard CPU port for communication, then port will be 0 and if you are using external communication board CM01, then port will be 1. Define the timeout in millisecond to wait for the response from the slave device. Now in the second block MB underscore MSG, at first input we will give a pulse to send a query to the slave device. At slave, we will configure the slave device address. RW as whether we want to read from or write to the slave device. ADDR is the starting address and count is the number of addresses we want to read or write. In data PTR we will define a pointer to the vMemory of the PLC. Now let me first demonstrate the PID controller data on the Modbus tester. I will read the PV value and then write the SV value from the ModScan software. Here PV is coming on the holding register 44097 and SV is coming on the holding register 48197. Modbus libraries in Microwin Smart. Required Modbus block can be found in libraries under the instruction section. This Modbus RTU Master and Modbus RTU Master 2 perform the same function. As I said earlier, S7200 Smart CPU supports two Modbus RTU master at a time, so for the same, two different libraries are given. But in case you are using only one master either from onboard RS485 port or from the external CM01 module, then any of this library can be used. You can simply drag and drop these blocks to your work area. Once you use these blocks in your program, these new subroutines will be automatically created under the library section in the programming block. These subroutines require certain memory allocation to execute the instruction written inside the blocks. So for this, we will be required to allocate the V memory areas for these blocks. Not that this memory area should not be overlapped with your existing memory usage or with any other libraries that you are using in your program. The logic sequence. This will be required to read and write from the serial device. This step may differ and depends on how many devices and addresses you are reading and writing. 
In the first step, MB underscore CTRL block, we will define boat rate and parity as per the slave US configuration. Now in the second step, this MB scan 1 will be set. This will be set with the first scan when the controller starts. I have also created a com underscore restart bit. This can be used to trigger the logic manually from the HMI or SCADA. So in case your communication fails, you can trigger this bit and restart the communication. Once the MB scan 1 bit is set, it will give a pulse to the MB underscore message block in the step number 3. Here I have configured the mode bus slave ID, address from which I want to read and the pointer to the vMemory where the data will be saved. Here PID's process value will be saved on the VW0. Once the block execution is done, it will set the MB scan 1 DN bit. This will reset the MB scan 1 bit and set the MB scan 2 bit in this step number 4. Once the MB scan 2 bit is set, it will give a pulse to this another MB MSG block in the step number 5. Here I have configured the modbus slave ID, address to which I want to write the SV value and the pointer of the V memory from where the data will be sent to the modbus slave address. Here we will write the SV value of the PID controller from VW10. Similarly, once the block execution is done, it will set the MB scan to done bit and it will trigger the 2 second timer to initiate the next reading from step number 3. Note that this timer T37 is like a gap between two scans. Once the T37 is done, it will again set the MB scan 1 bit and logic from step number 3 to step number 6 will keep executing in the loop. This way we can read and write to the slave device from the PLC. Now let me demonstrate this in real time. Here you can see the PV value is coming on VW0. And now let me update the value in VW10. So this will write the SP value to the controller. So friends, I hope this video was helpful to you. The link to download the backup is available in the video description. Thank you for watching and see you next video.